Welcome to Worship in the Word. Today we're talking about Job's teshuva. Teshuva is the Hebrew word for repentance. And uh, we're starting at Job chapter 1. There was a man in the land of Luz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 300,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she-asses and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feast, fe feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it might be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job, Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered, the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and eschewed evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee. To thy face. Okay, uh, there's quite a lot in that portion, but we see that uh, Job is one of the most successful men living and a very diligent man uh, and one that uh, seeked to do righteous things for himself and even pleaded f for his family. Um, and uh, God used him as an example to Satan. Uh, and this is showing that there is a uh, spiritual warfare that takes place uh, on, in earth uh, between God and uh, this fallen angel who is assigned duty is to steal, kill, and destroy, uh, and to malign the people of God. So um, I like to say that uh, there's two plans um, for your life and my life. There's the plan that Satan has to destroy your life to malign you and uh, to ruin you. 
Uh, and then there's the plan that God has for you. And um, so we can either go one direction or the other. The choice is ours. And uh, we have one life to live. And uh, Job has chosen to go the righteous path. But things are going to happen that, that uh, uh, because we have a challenge here, uh, Satan says, if, if, if you, right now, he's, he's, he's successful, he's doing everything great, because you've got to hedge your protection around him. And, folks, that's what God does with his people. He puts a hedge, hedge of protection. It's not just the blessings that we get in this life, uh, but there is a protective cover that God gives. And he says, you remove that protective cover over Job, uh, 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 the things that he possesses, and he's going to curse you. Well, um, we don't have time to read through everything, uh, and uh, but I can break it down that uh, he did lose all of his possessions, and his uh, children were destroyed, and he lost all of his wealth, and uh, it came down to the point where uh, he had had a decision to make about God, and he said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So he, instead of cursing God for having lost everything that he had, he had worked for all of his life, he blessed God. Well, then uh, Satan knocked, put it up a notch and uh, said, well, if, if you... Um, take that protection off of his body, let me touch his body, and let's see if he still continues to, to praise you. Let's go ahead and read the next section. Um, then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Okay, let's, let's see what happens here next. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he be will he give for his life but put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh and he will curse thee to thy face okay so uh, the bottom line is that uh, uh, Joe became sick had uh, a case of boils now if you've ever seen boils if you've ever had them they're horrible I had them, uh, I wrestled in college, and uh, the person that was to clean the mats uh, didn't adequately clean the mats, so they got uh, somehow, somebody had this staphylococcus germ on them, and it, it spread throughout the whole wrestling team. We had them, we had them all over our body when you, if... There's a desire to scratch wherever the boil is, and then if you get it on your finger and you scratch another part of your body, it spreads. So we all, every wrestler on the team had to go to the hospital. We had to have treatment. But um, it got to where, uh, and of course, anybody that is a caregiver for, for the, a person that has boils, they suffer along with him. And it came to the point where his wife 
uh, at when it got really bad, uh, she said, why don't you curse God and die? Uh, and uh, he was still faithful in that, uh, in that uh, he said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's turn to chapter 42. Uh, we're going to read a little bit here to uh, conclude out this uh, study of uh, suffering. Suffering uh, that happened uh, because sometimes bad things happen to good people. Amen. That, that's just the way it is. And, uh, and this is what happened here. He was, he was the most upright uh, person on earth, but he was involved in uh, spiritual warfare. Okay, go ahead. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I, had, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Okay, so uh, what we're seeing here in Job, even though he uh, remained faithful uh, in losing everything that he had, he remained faithful in losing his health, yet uh, there was a part of him that um, he said he abhorred himself. He, he, he disliked himself because he lacked faith about God's ability to turn this whole thing around. And this is where the teshuva came in. I mean, he, he, he uh, all of this, all of it was a journey, but he, when you, uh, repent with ashes, that's a metaphor, that's a sign uh, of, of, of complete submission in uh, repentance. All of the people of God, when, when uh, Joshua and his people lost the battle at Ai, they all went into sackcloth and ashes. And uh, when David uh, uh, sinned heavily, he, he went into sackcloth and ashes. All the great uh, people of God, uh, when they came to a point of, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I can't, I, I can't, I don't like myself. I, I don't like what I did. I, God, uh, there was, there was uh, a person that came to Jesus had a, a daughter uh, wanted, uh, needed healing and, and uh, Jesus said, do you believe? And he said, yea, Lord, help thou mine unbelief. And this is what's happening here with Job. He finally, he reached the point of, of total submission to God. And God, I, I just, um, I don't, I don't understand the wonderful things that I know you have planned for me. And I want to understand that. Therefore, I'm totally giving my life over in Teshuva. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. What did he do? Turn the captivity of Job when he prayed when, for his friends. When he prayed for his friends. Now, captivity is what, like when you're in jail. So, uh, there was a spiritual power that was resting over Job uh, the, from the dark side, a power that caused him to lose all of his possessions, the power that caused him to lose his health, the power that caused him to 
to seek total teshuva with with uh, ashes, and and uh, it says that uh, that uh, when he when he did this complete teshuva, uh, and especially uh, the 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 manifestation of that was that when he prayed for his friends. Now, um, the whole uh, narrative throughout this uh, book of Job is about Job and his friends. They At first they come to him, they sit, they're all sitting around, they're not saying anything, they're like uh, compassionate with him, you know, and uh, uh, trying to lift him up. But then eventually they get down to where they say, hey, Job, what did you do to cause all of this? You know, what, where is the sin? Show us the sin. You know, they were, they they were sitting in judgment of him and he hadn't really done anything bad. He, he's, he did everything the right way. And, and, uh, but yet this was a spiritual struggle. Peter in his, and in his writing said, think it not strange when this fiery trial comes <laughs> upon you. Amen. It's like gold tried in the fire, and and you know when gold is tried in the fire, uh, it uh, it comes it reaches certain temperature and it liquefies and all of the impurities come to the top, and uh, so there even though Job was doing everything outwardly correct, there was still an internal thing in him that had to be released, and and when he prayed. For his friends, and, and that's that's fine. You don't have to read anymore. He prayed for his friends, and that's what released his captivity. Uh, Jesus speaks about it, uh, the same thing, uh, and it's it's part of the law of Christ, uh, and it, it's found. You find it in uh, in the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said, "Bless those." that curse you and pray for those that despitefully use you. And, and it's the most difficult thing to do, folks, to do that. But we gain the victory because there is a, there is a captivity where you have this uh, thing, this offense, uh, this thing that wounded you, and uh, you would like to see revenge against the one that did it, or the people that did it, the circumstance. Um, but Jesus uh, gave us a way, and this is part of Teshuva, where we, where we can uh, come to God and confess our sins and seek direction, and then, uh, uh, then He said we have to pray for our enemies. And then the uh, uh, verse 12 of uh, the, the chapter 42 says that the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. So God wants to bless you uh, more in, in the end of your life than in the beginning. And the way that you can do that is, is through teshuva is to repent and uh, take up your cross, as Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. And uh, as we do that, that he will work on us. He will help us. Maybe we've suffered things and we didn't deserve to suffer them, but uh, God will, will give us Joy, he said, beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for the spirit of mourning. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. If my people which are called by my holy name will humble themselves and seek my face. If they pray, if they pray, if they pray and seek.